this trip um, and this course is really the most innovative thing I've ever been involved in. I mean, it, there's a number of different things that are really unlike any other courses in school. I mean, one is it's multi-age, so we have 9th through 12th graders in the same classroom. So we're really taking kids developmentally where they are versus saying, well, you're 14, so you do this. And, um, and also, it's multi-school, so kids get to meet people from other schools and have opportunities like that. And students get an opportunity to um, work on their schoolwork when they have the time and not have to show up at certain particular times. Um, and also, it's, um, it's considered a hybrid course in that it combines both um, online learning with face-to-face -face learning. So I feel like we're getting the best of both worlds. So we're having meetings while we're having online time and, and, and then we get intensively face-to-face -face during the summer. Number 10 Pond was just um, a two-day thing in the summer before we went on the trip where we just practiced with our snorkel gear and made sure all our all our gear was working properly so we didn't get to Bermuda and we're like, oh darn, my mask leaks. I don't have any backup plan now. I had gone snorkeling before so it wasn't completely new to me, but I definitely learned some new skills in terms of how to snorkel and how to breathe underwater, which was nice. And Brian kind of just walked us through the identification process and how we would do it, which was really helpful um, to learn before we actually went to Bermuda. So it's just a time for you to also practice so you, you know, get out to the ocean for the first time and try and learn how to snorkel because it's harder with the waves than just the calm number 10 pond. It's also to practice with your camera just to make sure that's working and also just to bond with your class and get to know them a little bit more before you spend a week with them in another country. It's just a time to, I don't know, it's like a practice run for the trip. After the takeoff, it was all right. Um, I was kind of happy it was a short plane ride. And the plane ride was fun. Like I got to take a lot of pictures, watch a movie. And then when we landed and we stepped off the plane and like the air just hit you, it was like, huh. Going through customs was really easy. I felt like there wasn't any problems. And most of them were really nice. The van ride to Bios was cool because uh, the driver's seat was on the other side and like it was really weird getting used to driving on like the wrong side of the road versus the right side of the road. So the walk was longer than I thought it was going to be, and uh, halfway there we got pelted on by rain, and it was really strong, but once we got to Whalebone, it stopped raining.
first we got there, um, and then we went into the air conditioned spot where there was the aquarium. There were different little sections. And then there was the big aquarium, the big tank. Um, and then students took notes on the different fish that they saw. They did like a mock survey of the aquarium and the different fish inside. Um, and then after they explored outside, which had like different regions, like there was an Australia, there was a, I think a Kenya, um, Africa, which had different animals in it. Um, that was fun. And that's about all we did. Um, what happened on the plankton tow was we got in a boat, we headed down out into the open ocean somewhat in that direction. Um, Caitlin, the person who was helping us, uh, we put in two, um, what is it called, nets? Two of those in to catch the plankton. Um, and then we put another one in that, that wasn't catching the plankton because then it was better for seeing the bioluminescence in the plankton. We returned to BIOS and then students put those planktons into little petri dishes which they observed under microscopes, um, like seeing little crustaceans and fish. And then students were taken into this dark room where Caitlin agitated the net and um, they could see the bioluminescence. My name is Dreddy. I am the uh, diving safety officer at Maya, and I manage all the boats besides the uh, ship. I don't have anything to do with the ship. Um, but uh, I have been, I am Bermudian. I was born and raised here, and um, uh, I have been associated with Maya since 1987. Um, so the Arctis was really cool as a high-profile reef, so there was 
these, you would be able to look, uh, swim around and there would be reefs that you had to like dive down to, but then there was also these sort of huge like walls around the ocean um, where you could just swim next to them. You didn't even have to dive down and you would see tons of fish. So things that I saw at the arches, I remember seeing a ton of blue tang and we could get like really close to them because they were on the reef, which was like right in front of you and you didn't have to swim down to them. Um, I also remember seeing a lot of trumpet fish there. Um, so the purposely sunk boat, we didn't have to take a survey out, which was sort of cool. So we didn't have our boards. We just got to swim around and explore it because we were only there for about 20 minutes. And we went at high tide, so we were able to swim over the entire wreck, where if you go at low tide, sometimes it's out of the water more. And there's just like coral all over the entire ship, which is really cool. Um, and I think because it's sort of like an aquarium thing, the fish are like really used to people. You could get really close to them there. Like they didn't really care when you were sitting right by them. Um, so we saw a lot of like, we saw some angel fish and we saw a lot of really pretty fish that you could get really close to. Um, that was definitely one of the really fun things. It was super cool. I mean, I've never seen a shipwreck before. So that was awesome. It was what the most like one of the more touristy spots that we went to, um, and we went sort of during a high tourist time. Um, it was sort of sad though because you could definitely see like that compared to a beach with less tourists. Like the water quality wasn't as good and the visibility wasn't as good, and you could see just like trash on the bottom and stuff, which is sort of just like kind of sucks. Um, there's tons of these little like island things and these like channels and stuff, which were fun to swim through, but it was just kind of like hard to see. But I don't know, maybe next year they could go back and do like a trash underwater trash cleanup there mm -hmm. or something. Um, because that could definitely help. Pandora's box was similar to all the other big ocean dives we did. I, we saw the um, the low profile reef was pretty far below us, so we just kind of saw it from a bird's eye view. Um, and there were you know the classic parrotfish and uh, blue tang swimming around those. But then there were also the boilers that we could swim up to, and it was really cool to swim inside of those and get turned around by the waves a little bit. And we saw a lot of urchins in those, which was really cool. Um, So when I was at Nonsuch Island, I just hung out with the boat captain that was trying to catch the, the lionfish. And at first we thought there was one of them. It was under a rock and it was kind of hidden in the back. And so we were trying to see which side it was going to come out because there were two openings and uh, whether or not that he could spear it with his spear that he had. And so we ended up finding him off, off onto one side and we tried to shoot him. But then the captain saw another one and so we... Uh, he tried to shoot a smaller one, and it was so small that he just kind of surrounded it with three spikes and trapped it, and so he was able to kind of catch it alive, and they kept it back at Bios. And then the other one, I think, they, they couldn't get it, so they were just going to come back for it. But it was really cool to see the lionfish. The lionfish is actually really pretty, despite how awful it is for all the environment stuff in Bermuda. But uh, I think that it was cool to see one and not get stung by one at the same time.
walk around the shops and all the cute little tourist destinations. I kind of like stared at some of the prices and like outrage. Like, <laughs> what? And then the atmosphere was great, you know, like all the locals were like really nice and happy and it just made me really happy and like aspire to be that nice. Achilles Bay, it's pretty calm. I saw some cute kids, you know, I made friends with them. Um, <laughs> you know, I went to the left instead of the right, and so the left had like nothing there. I saw maybe like one or two squid and then a dead squirrel fish, and that's about it. Um, so when I did the night snorkel at Whalebone, we went up the left side, so I saw some of the same places that I had seen in the daytime a couple days prior. So it was cool to see the different fish that stayed in the same location that they were at and which ones had gone to sleep at night. So for example, we saw a lot of squirrel fish that were out both in the day and night, but I didn't see very many parrot fish at night when I saw them during the day, which was really cool to see that contrast. And it was also just cool to see how different the reef looked at night. Um, I think it was just a, a whole different experience with seeing everything in the, in the light as well as in the dark. Yeah, so Torch Bay, we went down like lots of stairs and it was very wavy, like the waves were like really strong. So many of us like came out a little bit earlier because like it was hard to swim, like hard to like, go down and see fish. But it was really beautiful there too and we, I think that might have been the place that we saw like the baby squid, so that was cool. Church Bay looked really great and we started going down these long stairs and then when we got to the bottom, it was covered with trash and we just sat on the beach eating our lunch and then we started picking up trash to help clean it up and that was helpful. We saw cute little crabs there. We went to Bowie, Bermuda Underwater Exploration Institute and we saw lots of exhibits there like the um, dinosaur exhibit with lots of ancient underwater creatures and then we went on this underwater dive that it was kind of a ride, it like shook the thing, and we saw lots of underwater creatures there. We went into like the diving like exploration part, and it just kind of showed us like the first way people dived into like the ocean, and they like went into this big bubble. And then I went to a shell room, and like it was beautiful, like all these different shells that they had. And, there are different colors too, like I don't think I've ever seen a shell like other than white, a white shell. So there was like uh, this like really cool like shark thing and if you like step in like the sharks are kind of swimming around you, it's like a TV kind of thing and then like it like scares you and I got really scared of that. And there was also a like platform I guess of from the Bermuda and like you know, the plates kind of. Shh.
So on the last day, we did this really long walk on Warwick Long Bay, and it, we stopped at several beaches, and you could snorkel. Mostly we identified different plants, like coastal plants, and learned how they adapted to the coastal environment. It was really nice because we were able to, um, for the first time, really walk around and observe plants and really look at the geological feature of Bermuda. I don't know, I just think everything is just exciting to just know, like learn new things. Um, I really liked walking around and being on a beach, that was really fun. And the water is just so beautiful. And climbing up these crazy cliffs <laughs> and getting cut, but um, it's just all part of the adventure. Afterwards, we went to um, by bus, we went to Finish Point, and there it was really nice, calm water, and we just spent a long time snorkeling, it was a really relaxed snorkel. We saw, um, let's see, I think I might have seen a Blenny for the first time. I saw Great Barracuda and um, a bunch of other really cool fish. We went to Spanish Point, and that was probably my favorite snorkeling place just because it was much quieter um, waters than usual, and I, I just thought I saw way more things. For the first time, I saw a hogfish, and that was so cool. And I saw a flounder, and those are always really cool. And, uh, let's see, I saw a bunch of squirrelfish, and a ton of four-eye butterflies. 